Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on the third episode of the D Guest Podcast. The song that you just heard before this intro is called Lights, produced by Christopher, also known as Killigrew. And as many of you who follow him know very well that he's transparent with a lot of his things, with whatever he's doing in life, whenever he's creating some new music, etc., etc. And I thought it would just be cool to have a little podcast version of all that. Uh, He goes pretty into detail about what his background is, what his upbringing is, and you might find it cool to listen to while you're walking the dog or while you're washing the dishes, cleaning around the house and whatnot. So hope you enjoy this one and thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, how I got to this point, uh, I've been, basically I've been writing music for 10 years this summer, I think. Uh, I'm 26 soon, so I start. It all started when I was like 15, 16, and uh, coming from this metal background, I knew that I wanted to be in a band. Uh, but you know, when you're a beginner and your friends have been playing guitar their whole life, you're too, like, you're too much of a beginner to join them, right? So mm-hmm. I just played on my own for like a, a year or so, and then I got into the high school when I was 16. I got into the music-oriented uh, class. Like everyone in this class is either uh, studying music or theater or like art, like write, like drawing and stuff. So mm-hmm. a lot of my old friends, they were already in this class. But the thing was, I was the only one there that didn't play an instrument like until I joined. So my teachers, my teachers didn't really like me <laughs> because I didn't, okay. I didn't, I couldn't play an instrument. I didn't understand anything. I couldn't read notes. Uh, so yeah, I felt like I was really the underdog sort of. But I discovered one thing in the school. And that was on their computers, they had Cubase. It's like FL Studio, but, you know, uh, yeah, it's much... I think it's older, but yeah, yeah. it's basically... It's a, it's a DAW, though, a digital audio workstation. And I noticed they had these instruments on there, and I've been... Uh, ju- I've just started to practice piano at home, because I always liked the piano parts in, like... I always loved piano music, and I wanted to play since I was a kid. But I didn't start until I was like 16, 17. So I I used their uh, school computers and just learned how the how the programs worked, how the VSTs worked. And as soon as I got home, uh, or not as soon as I got home, but yeah, later, like later that first year, I would download this software at my home computer. And I would just, you know, sit there and just figure out how, you know, harmonies worked, how to make... I don't know, just how to write music on my own, I guess. And I did that for about two years. And then in my last year at the school, the third year, you had to make like a big project. And uh, the most people, they do not decide to like compose a song or anything. But a few did. So they wrote like one or two songs. And then I come there and I write like 15 songs. (laughs) And I make my first album, which was a piano album. It's on my Bandcamp, but it's not on my Spotify or anything. Uh, so I think the teachers were a bit shocked because I was the, the biggest beginner in the class, but I, I had come that far in just two years. And that's a testament to just like, you know, you work every day after school. Even in school, every time we had a break, like a recess, I would lock myself in the piano rooms just to practice. Uh that was uh, really important, I think. Like, it was like I found this hobby that I never knew that I had a passion for, and it just developed and uh, progressed. So I guess flash forward after high school, I was home for one year. I went to the US actually with my mother and my grandparents for about how long? Yeah, I guess about a month. We stayed there. Should have seen me, man. <laughs> yeah, but that we were in New, we were in New York, and then yeah. and then like Chicago, and a little, like we just drove around there and visited some relatives. And those That's relatives are actually here now in Sweden visiting us today. Hey, That's okay. pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when I came home from US, I think that was like autumn, uh, two thousand eleven. Uh, I had this break, you know. I just finished high school. I didn't have a job. Uh, 
mom was like, you need a job or you need to continue studying on the univers- university? But I told her, like, I would needed, I wanted one year at home first before I would decide to do what to do. And that year at home, I uh, started my Killigrew channel uh, a few months after discovering Black Mill and Faint. And, because I was a metal guy. I listened to metal music or piano music and uh, some orchestral music. But I, I was not into electronic music at all. Uh, it was, I think, uh, I, I mean, I heard Skrillex and that, because that got really big that summer. Yeah. And I was like, and this is pretty cool, but it wasn't until I delved deeper in the dubstep genre that I ended up in the chill step section of YouTube, and I was like, and I heard Faint and Black Mill, and I discovered that they, wow, they like, they use a lot of piano, right? Right. And I play piano, and I figured, wait, what if I learn to make drum beats? And then I add that to my piano songs. Would that work? I w- that's uh, that's the idea behind me making the Killigrew channel in December that year. So wait, the channel was. Ba- did you upload piano material first, or you no, just no, no, uploaded? No. I had I had an older channel that I sort of abandoned to make when I made the Killigrew one. Right. Uh, okay, I think I remember that. That was your. That was like your actual name. Yeah, I used my real yeah. name that back then, and that was not a smart move. Oh. <laughs> why not <laughs> uh so yeah uh i uh i just delved really head first into the electronic music and the first year is i actually i wouldn't say that i made any like real chill step for the first year even though i was inspired by black Mill and faint in the beginning i just took time to learn the different genres i tried different genres like house trance uh, drum and bass, dubstep, orchestral dubstep was like the first thing I tried, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I noticed that even in the first year, like some people they liked it, but yeah, it went really, sl- it went really slow, I guess. But I mean, I had no idea what what I was doing. Like, I had to learn FL Studio, and I had to learn. You know, you just try to soak in as much information as you can in a short period of time that you can right uh i i i got like help from certain people that knew more than me like they would tell me like this is how you side chain i was like holy crap this changes everything and then uh, a few months later in uh, like i think summer autumn 2012 i moved away i got into this university for sound design and music uh I would later uh, like uh, quit the university in my last year, though. But uh, How anyway, long did you spend I, in the university. What? How long did you spend in the university? Two, just two and a half years. Okay. It's supposed right. to be three or four. All right. Uh, so anyway, I moved to this new town, just one hour north. It's not that far, but yeah, I got this apartment with with my then girlfriend, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of free time then. Even though if I even though I was in your university, I had a lot of free time. So I spent almost every free time on uh, just... Because I understood from my... Because I tried these different genres and nothing really... Like, I tried house, I tried trance. It wasn't fun at all. Drum and bass wasn't my thing, even though I tried it. But I noticed that the calmer dubstep really... That was really where I had the most fun and I felt I had the most freedom. Uh, right. But it, like, even though I wanted to make that uh, the year before, it took about one and a half, two years until I had the sound that I wanted. Uh, but, okay. So yeah, it just <laughs> that much time until I had the sound, right? Uh, I remember Sacred in uh, Autumn 2012, he taught me how to make those bendy sounds in Nexus. And that and the side chaining, that I, I learned those two traits, you can say, from two different guys. And uh, without learning that, I don't know what would have happened, but then comes uh, 2013, and, you know, spring 2013, I make Courage, I make the song Kida, and I make Sweet Solitude. And that's when I noticed that, wow, things are really picking up now, right? Um, Mm -hmm. I think Kida got 10,000 views in a week, and that's insane back then, because I I had, like, maybe 2,000 subscribers. 
And you get, I get five times the views that I have for subscribers. I don't know. This, yeah, that's true. That's today. True. That's it. Today, that's like impossible because YouTube uh, is much worse now than it was before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kida, I think, was like the song that really kickstarted, uh, like, to get people to listen to me. I guess it also helped that Black Mill himself commented on some of my songs because back then, if someone commented on you. Their subscribers could see in their feed that they commented on that specific video. So I, I woke I woke up to like you know 500 new subscribers some days. Uh, that was insane because it felt like I don't know the community felt really alive and strong. It's different right. now, but it's mostly because YouTube just is different. Uh, Google really ruined that. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, no, but I, I know what you're talking about when you're talking yeah. about uh, the community too. Like, uh, I think it was that's also part. Of, yeah, really, just exciting. I felt like every time I made a song, the the community feedback was like a, a drug almost. Like, uh, they gave you a, like a really like extreme sense of happiness that you felt like what you did really mattered. It's also but, really a positive community. Yeah. And at the time, I mean, I was still a beginner. I had just got into FL Studio. So yeah, I decided after I had made like 10 songs in a row, I released those 10 songs as the Sweet Solitude album and I just put it up on Spotify. Uh, not really, I didn't really have any, any expectations at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I just put it up there because I have my goal with Killigrew was that uh, I wanted to take everything as serious as possible. Like from visual art to, I don't know. I just wanted it to seem professional, even though I wasn't, even though I wasn't a professional. Right. And that was really important to me. And uh, then I took a break for, like, not not a break, but uh, Sweet Solitude came out in like August two thousand thirteen, uh, and those were just compiled of random singles that I had made in the past year, right? So mm -hmm. I then decided, okay, I have this new idea. I just bought a new laptop. Uh, actually, it's kind of interesting because I had no money then. Uh, I could barely pay the rent. Even though you get money from the state to, to for, for for studying, I decided I'm gonna take a loan for like one thousand uh, dollars to buy a computer that I that I can actually produce on. So I did that, probably thinking I'm throwing all this money like away, right? Yeah. Uh, so I buy this new laptop. Why did I buy a laptop? Don't do that. <laughs> unless yeah. unless it's like a good producing laptop. But anyway, I bought a laptop. It's supposed to be good for gaming and producing. So I then disappeared for uh, August, September, November. Oct oh, wait, I said November before October. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I, I, I disappeared from August to Christmas, right? Yeah. And in that time, I didn't, I didn't post anything, really. I didn't post any songs. But I made... a. Uh, album, you know, Animus. I remember that album. Yeah. I think that was the first one that I found you on, or that's the first time. Um, it, it was either Sweet Solitude, but I think Animus was the first one I fully listened to. Um, yeah, because I I made those those songs together, right? So mm -hmm. they're supposed to be experienced together. Yeah. I uh, re released that probably like the day before Christmas, and then I went home, and it's kind of funny because the last song I finished was Coming Home. And then the day I released it, I took the train to go home. Yeah, everything felt really special. Yeah. But I remember a lot of promoters, they were like, no, this isn't good enough. And like, or they didn't answer at all. But uh, uh, only Chillstep, at least, he uploaded Coming Home and he got really a lot of support there. Mm -hmm. So thank and you. Now. Thank you, only yeah. Chillstep. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, then it comes 2014, and uh, I have this talk with Varian, like you know, like a, a Skype lesson. Like you know, I pay him and he ta teach me stuff. Yeah. And uh, he was basically like, "You have a good brand going. Like we love how you have this like nature and forests everywhere, and you have a I love your melodies, but the mixing is really bad." Right. So he can like up to that part. I. I didn't. I didn't think my music was mixed bad because for me that wasn't the most important part. The music itself was really what was important to me. How I felt by listening to it, just the melodies and 
just the atmosphere. Like, I, I don't care if it doesn't sound like a Monster Cat song, you know? It doesn't have to sound super compressed, super processed, mm-hmm. super strong kicks. I didn't care about that too much. Uh, but anyway, they made me look at my music in a very critical way. Uh, right. I couldn't really finish any songs because I just I just, I started disliking what I did in 2014. Because That's of bad. the variant? Yeah, because because of, the, because of the lesson. Yeah. Even though he yeah. meant well, like I don't blame him, but that made me look at myself really bad. And yeah. uh, cuz the year before, I made music out of pure joy and you can see how, how many songs I made then, right? Uh, right, yeah. So now I got really critical. I I kind of took it upon me to like, okay, I need to get down how to make better kicks and snares. Uh, and then uh, May 2014, we have an accident in the family. Uh, my two older stepsisters, they were in a car crash and only one survived. Mm-hmm. And because oh. of I was in that, so during May and June... I was just, I have never really experienced like loss like that before. Yeah. And uh, my long time relationship just fell apart because I wasn't myself. So I just let her slip away. And she, uh, one week later, she was together with her best friend, like a, like a new guy that she knew. Yeah. And I just felt like, I don't know, it felt really bad because I was really happy with her, you know? I thought we would be together forever. And this is a girl I've been in in love with since I was 15 so uh, that's many yeah. years and she just one week later she already had a new relationship you know it felt really really awkward and bad uh, anyway I slowly started doing worse in university as well that autumn uh, I only released two songs that year and that's Deeper Still and Hurt the only good uh-huh. thing about this is that you can hear in Deeper Still and Hurt that my mixing got a lot better. Yeah. Uh, the kicks and snare especially sounds really the way I like it. And I still mix it sort of the same way now four years later. I'm pretty right. happy with... Uh, like, I'm not like a big... like uh, I'm not an audio elitist and I'm not like, oh, it's mixed bad. Like I only care about the music, really. Like the content of yeah, it. And yeah. And that's, that's what comes first. Yeah, you do... You, I mean, naturally, you're gonna get better at mixing, right? But it's not like, like, don't stop yourself from releasing music because you, you're not happy with the mixing yet. You you can fix that later, like remix it or something, right? Right. Uh, and um, I uh, I moved back to my dad's house. Uh, I think in like November that year. Uh, and I then in like December, January, I just wrote to my school and said like I'm gonna pause and like just you because you can pause your studies and continue a later year if you want to, right? But I just told him like I have other things to do. I'm going to, you know, move back home and stop school. Okay. Uh, but one of the reasons for doing that is that I noticed it's kind of like fate into like it's it's uh, like. You know, fate intervenes when you least expect it. Uh, because at the exact same time that I move home, I'm starting to get these like paychecks from Spotify. I noticed that, oh, what's going on? Like People are actually streaming my music a lot. <laughs> and I yeah. thought this was a one-time thing. I was like, okay, I guess this happens maybe once a year. And the next month, I get the same. Next month, I get the same. Next month, I get the same. Half a year later, I get the same, but a lot more. I tell my dad, you know, dad, maybe I don't need a job. I can just focus on writing music now. And it was quite weird. And, uh, you know, I told my friends that, I mean, I had friends that were much more popular than me, but they didn't have music on Spotify. And I asked them, like, you should probably consider putting your music on Spotify because... I don't know what's going on, but it's working. Right. Uh, and it's been four years now, and it's still what I do. Uh, even though people might think I'm not writing music, like I'm working on probably 20 songs right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you might not see me being active, but I'm actually playing piano and writing music all the time when I'm not like gaming with my friends. And, you know, the composing. I have this months where I only compose, and then I have these 
months where I just, you know, sit down and I mix. And that's what I'm gonna go e into very soon now. It's the mixing, st yeah. the mixing part. Yeah, I try to. I want to have one big album out every year. Like that's my goal. It yeah. keeps me focused. And uh, I think that's a very. You can do that. Like uh, I hear your work, um, and it, you got to balance obviously just um, yeah. the writing and the quantity and the quality, which I think you you know you have a very good sense of. I've heard your work, and when you, uh, I just wanted to talk quickly about when you said you're mixing on deeper still and hurt. Um, the, the yeah, and those songs, I was gonna throw the songs away. I wasn't gonna release them. I wasn't yeah. hundred percent happy, but I think I asked a friend, and uh, he was like, ah, "Just release them," and I put them out on YouTube, and the uh, support was immense. Yeah, I did not expect anyone to like them, and they did a lot of them. Hey, Deeper Still was a good song. I liked that one a lot. Yeah, you, so. you did a cover of that, and that cover yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of made me realize, wait, it actually is a good song? <laughs> it, dude, it's a good song. You put out good stuff. Same like, thing when it, you made the Lights piano cover. Your oh, piano yeah. cover made me realize, okay, this song deserves to get some extra attention, because I wanted yeah. to remake it. Uh, I, I like I like the um yeah and I don't I don't do piano covers anymore I haven't been doing that yeah uh, recently. I still but have I, do, I have your piano covers saved in my computer somewhere. That's awesome, man. I, I appreciate that. But I think uh, for me, it's just uh, what I really like about your songs. It's it's very you know it's simple, uh, but simplicity doesn't always mean that it's yeah. just easy to make. You know, it's just very it's easy to listen to. Like the listening experience is, experience is not it's not uh, tough to go through, but Ever since, ever since uh, your mixing uh, got better, um, I think that's where I think that's what is setting it apart. Because as much as you know, when <clears throat> when you had that conversation with Varian and you say that the content is important, um, mixing in a way is a part of that content, at least the way that I see it. And since I've been listening to more radio stuff yeah. recently, um, at least it matters to me yeah it but, matters so it, it can be played on different speakers and radio it, it has to sound decent right right but it's not uh, in in the end i love melodies i love melodic music it makes me right. you know music it doesn't need vocals necessarily like you right. can listen to it and just you know it puts you in this uh, magic world uh, fantasy world i guess uh -huh. uh, yeah and also it's like because it, um, I, I think the way that you write music too, it's it's a little bit difficult for a lot of people, uh, including myself, to try and do something like that. It's the it's hard to keep a song interesting without vocals. At least yeah. I think so. That's why I have um, so many different parts, like part what, part A, B, C, D. So it right. so it shifts, and you feel that shift in the rhythm and the I don't know. Like you change up the chords, so it feels more uplifting suddenly. Like the song can start sad, and then you f right. and then you you just randomly get this uh, rhythm and this uplifting harmonies, and you just you know you're on a, you're on on a journey. Right, right, yeah, and I think that's that's where you can stand out a lot is that at least your music is interesting um, with the melodies and the sound choices that you have. It's it's tough to again, it's tough for me to write a song that. <clears throat> Is interesting without vocals, um, and I know you've done a little bit before with like um, Elvia, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I have um, uh, ex uh, I have uh, done some experiments with Elvia for vocals and with my friend Claudia Macula. Uh, oh, Macula, I, remember, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know how to pronounce her last Salary. name, but Claudia, you know, from Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you met Celery. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, you know her, right? Yeah, I've sent her an email before. She she writes long emails. Yeah, yeah, she's an awesome. <laughs> yeah. She's he's, she's awesome actually. She's but very she was, sweet. She was really yeah. she was really easy to work with because I just asked her, "Can you hum something?" And like and I'm just you know la, like la 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 to this melody that I wrote on the piano, and she sends me back really quickly. And I'm like, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Like I think she uh, I remembered uh, she had this album that I listened to a couple of years ago. Um, but I cannot remember. I think it was Dreamer. Was that the name of it? Yeah, I did. I did the cover art. I think for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I do remember you did the cover art for that too. That was like what three, four years ago. Yeah, I think, that's I think it yeah. was three years ago. 
Yeah. 2016. That was a sweet record. I remember that one. Um, but I haven't heard much of her work since. Uh, she has been very active. I think she's getting more into like the whole, uh, you know, like other composers and you know games. They need like like she's getting kind of big in that way that she she features on other people's music, right? Right. Uh, and even games, I think, and like uh, short movies. Okay. But yeah, she does think... prefer to compose on her own. Okay. Yeah, I just remembered. Um, I remembered these were like the two, I guess, vocalists uh, you worked with. But even Claudia wasn't really. Uh, she wasn't very vocal heavy, I guess, on the songs that you've done no. or you've you tried to work with on her. Um, it, so, it wasn't lyrics yeah. or anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm do I do, I am challenging myself right now because I have started singing again for like the first time in like five years. Mm-hmm. So I do have two songs now where I have written lyrics and uh, yeah, that's gonna be different because instead of having like flutes and guitars making the melody, it's gonna be my own voice. <laughs> and how so, challenging is that gonna be for you? Do you think? Uh. I I do have this new perspective of things uh, because I had to break out of the whole I hate my music and I started to like <laughs> I started to like understand that you know perfect imperfections like it's it's all right if it's imperfect that's what makes it beautiful right uh, I started having this perspective on my music and that that made everything a lot better including uh, including like accepting my voice and uh, like I think it sounds pretty all right when you know when I don't sing false. You just need to take do a different like do a few takes and you know you take the one that sounds best and you know you put some you know you put it through the plugins and you don't. Yeah. I love plugins. Yeah. So, <laughs> I just uh, do you um have you used um, pitch correction on your work? Because I can't remember. Like for my voice. Yeah. Yeah, but it almost like uh, the things that do sound good, they're already usually in pitch. I just put it yeah. there because, you know, OCD. I right, might try right. to increase it or decrease it. It's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's not like it's going to be noticeable, I think. <laughs> oh, um. <clears throat> I'm just curious too. Uh, I, I I know how heavy you are into the artistry side of things, um, but I'm, you know, I, I like the artistry too. Uh, but more recently, just you know, to satiate my hunger for this side of things, I'm curious to know what your, what it's like. You're mixing, or like how you go about mixing. I know that it's not something you're super into, and yeah. it seems like both the past two producers I've. Uh, done a podcast with have not enjoyed it uh, and not enjoyed mixing or haven't gotten into mixing. I enjoy it now. Uh, yeah. But it's not like I have this magic like number of things that I'm, that I'm doing. Uh, well, right. I use FO Studio, so I use the, you know, the limiter a lot. Mm-hmm. It's mostly just to remove so you don't get distortions. Of course. Uh, and sometimes I need it to increase the like if I have a flute that echoes, you know, left and right, dut, 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 I put a limiter on that and increase it. It makes so the the echoing is more like forever. It just keeps on going. It <laughs> really do forever. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And you know, the, I have my way of uh, like mixing my kicks and snares. Like I usually have this trick now where I make my kick really punchy. Yeah. I I basically uh, the, right now I for Studio Twelve. I route the kick to another channel, so it basically gets doubled. Then I decrease the volume of the first channel, and I put LF Max Punch from Voxengo, uh, and I increase like the frequency to 150, or sometimes I keep it at 100. I, I, uh, what do I do? Wait, I can open the program maybe. But yeah, I, I basically I make the kick tighter, like I make it thinner. And then I go open a, a parametric EQ. Uh-huh. And I remove the low end, like the the, lo, the like the low hundred uh, hatch or something. Yeah. I remove the mids to around fifty percent. Then I increase the high by like two or three decibel. Mm-hmm. I have shown this in like some tutorials of mine. 
Yeah. This makes the kick uh, have uh, less mid and no like super sub base. It's just like I don't know how to explain it, but the freak like the. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah, the kick is more yeah. like it's like hollow, like it's a bit hollow, but it's still yeah. very punchy and very tight. Uh, mm-hmm. It took a lot of uh, analyzing Black Mist music until I started to understand what he's doing with his kicks a long time right. ago. <laughs> and then with the uh, with the LF Max Punch plugin, I just you know I increase the sub there. Like I, I might remove the sub from the EQ, but then I increase uh-huh. everything that I want to increase in the other plugin. And for me, that makes the kick sound really good. Yeah, and I've just been really for the past year I haven't changed anything how I'm doing kicks. But I haven't really released that much in the past year, anyway. <laughs> uh, but you're, you're like for you, the mixing is really just it, it, a lot of it's with the drums. Yeah, I'm. I have. I I'm, obviously I'm saving my own presets, like I'm saving the mixer presets, and then yeah, I alter them depending on the song, what the song needs. Like I might change here and there, but yeah. uh, I'm trying to make it quick for myself, so I save all the mixer presets, so I don't. Basically, I just speed up things. But then I right. use my monitor speakers just to like you know make sure everything actually sounds to co- coherent I guess together. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I mean can, yeah. the biggest thing is just side chaining actually. Side chaining, everybody side chaining like is, is important. I think side chaining is like the huge revelation for a lot of people when they uh, yeah. figured out how to side chain. Uh, I think it took me several years before I finally understood. Oh, side chaining is actually pretty important to be able to yeah uh, because get certain instruments to stand out. Because when the kick hits, uh, the things they have side chained, you know, their volume ducks, it, it decreases for that like yeah. millisecond, and that just makes the everything sounds really smooth. And you also yeah. get that kind of you get that you get that bouncy feeling, even though it's not dance music, it's still important to get that bouncy feeling in the rhythm. Oh yeah, well it's because you want people to move. Yeah, yeah you just feel yeah. you know feel the music and the side chaining your kicks is uh, for me a big part of that. What are the um I guess the compressors you use uh, for side chaining? I don't use compressor for doing it but I'm using the or I guess it's a compressor of sorts but I'm using the du, 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 where is it it's the like a peak controller in Fruit Loops okay you know what that is I don't but I it seems like Fruity Loops has a lot of good stock uh, yeah plugins. I don't uh, use I don't use the instrument plugins but like the mixer plugins I do use like yeah. delay reverb and the peak yeah. controller and the limiter. I've seen a lot of people use the fruity verb, uh, which is uh, yeah. I, I remember Sometimes I was trying to it. yeah. I was trying to tinker around with uh, fruity loops for a little bit, and I tried their fruity verb, and um, it was cool. I think actually when I first started, um, the delay is good. Best, yeah, huh? The fruity delay is very good. Yeah, I haven't I haven't worked much with uh, fruity loops at all. I know that so many people do use it. Um, but I, I mean, I guess I might be able to explore it at some point or another. It's just I, I'm always on Logic, so yeah, the only yeah. plugins I know. and like nobody in this space uses Logic, which blows my mind. But I mean, it's okay. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, when you check Discord, I think there's like most people are FS Studio. Then we have Unoya. He's the only one on a- Ableton. <laughs> oh yeah. And there's oh, one and guy you... on Reason. And then you there's. Know, who is uh, it? Yeah, I don't see anyone here in Logic at all. Yeah, no, everybody, and uh, also, like, I was on a Discord group chat, and they were like, yeah, we don't like, or someone didn't like Apple products. I mean, I get it, but, I mean, also at the same time, like, Logic, I think the thing that is different with Logic is there's a lot less automation you can do with uh, when it comes to creating your instruments. Yeah. Um, so it's just you have to do it more manually, uh, but Ableton, I think, is a very powerful tool, and I, I think um, I think that's also part of the reason that uh, Unoyo is able to uh, do, or he's been able to grow as fast as he as he's done. Yeah. I mean, as, apart from the fact that he's also been working hard to learn so much. Yeah, he's been uh, yeah. learning really quickly. Uh, I, I I think it's insane how much better he's gotten in just a year's time. 
um, especially I say I would say within the past four months. He's yeah, yeah. The first song that that I really like, he wowed me with was Promises. I think that was in like in January or something. Yeah, I heard that and I was like, no, this I was blown away actually. And he started on guitar. I, I think he started uh, making that song a guitar too. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then he transposes so. everything to the keyboard, maybe. Yeah, but now, like with especially with his newest EP, I think really um, "Leave Me Behind" is probably his best, his best piece of work. I've only heard the um, first song yet, so I'm gonna check that out soon. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, also, he has um, he has his yeah. sound going on. That's very important. Yeah, and it's it's distinct. You know, I think um, I think as he as time goes on, like uh, I'm excited to hear what the second year is gonna be looking like for him because it, he's grown a lot. Um, I wish I grew that much too as a producer, but um, yeah, you know, you can only wish for so much. I mean, I was in GarageBand for until uh, for like four or five years, and that's okay. You know, it's 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 a place to start. Like again, like I always yeah, you, think you that get comfortable as well in your uh, dub. Yeah, uh, I I don't see why I would change f- away from FS Studio. Like I I'm very. Happy with the way you make beats. I'm happy with the way you automate. Yeah, and I that was a very powerful. And you can tool. have like a you can you can you can select your background. So can I? I can have a beautiful wallpaper behind everything. It's yeah. easy to see where my sample packs are on the left side. I don't know. It's like I can make any genre in this. I didn't realize how powerful it was until like I started yeah. real, realizing how me, many people were using it. Me neither, because. In my first year, I used Cubase, and I thought FS Studio was like was a week. I thought it FS like a Studio, toy. yeah, yeah FS Studio was like, oh, but well, that's like you can't you can only do so much in that. You gotta go Cubase if you want to do real music. How wrong I was! <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I I totally agree. Uh, They're all FL, pretty much equal yeah. in power, I guess. All these all these DAWs are really like FL Ableton. You guys can do probably ninety six, ninety seven percent of all the same things that. All these DAWs can do. Even Reaper, What's I that? think. You've never heard of Reaper? Nah. Nope. I have a friend that that likes to talk about Reaper all the time. Um, but that's aside from the point. Uh, I hate Pro Tools for producing, but Pro Tools is a great tool for mixing. I don't yeah, know if yeah. You've ever used like, it especially if you make live music. Like my friends who make metal music, yeah. they mix in, in Pro Tools. I've tried yeah. to understand Pro Tools, but... It I've was, come it to was, like it, it was hard. Yeah, I've come to like it enough, you know, especially for doing the engineering side of things. But for producing, it's god awful. Like trying to yeah. write in MIDI, uh, it's just it's so much slower. I mean, you can still do it; it's just significantly slower than <laughs> uh, on Logic or probably Ableton as well, because you can't program anything in there. They can't like program drums or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Um, I have one more question. Yeah. I have to I have to go get ready for school soon because I'm gonna be. Uh, yeah, I'm actually starving. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. But one more question. I can't let you leave before this one. Right. Okay. Um. Or I guess two. Is it from uh, have... Safiros? No. Secret, uh, no, they're not. Secret question. No. <laughs> uh, no, they're they're um they are the questions about the new tracks that are coming out and the shooting of the music video. How are yeah, those coming yeah, along? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I got approached in, you know, actually the second time I'm approached by someone like this. The first time the guy just flaked out. But this guy oh. called Josh, maybe, from California, he, I think he's five years older than me, so he's like 30. Uh, but he works with music videos, he works for Disney, Lionsgate, like, and you know, he's just a very talented video guy. He he told me, like, because he, like, he's a fan of my music and Black Mill and, you know, and guys like that see me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he told me like w- if I'm up to actually m- making a real music video with m- one of my upcoming songs and I sent him like 10 different demos and the one that he really liked was Fireflies yeah. which is a song that I've been working on on and off for f- since since Animus in 2013 and uh, I told him alright I'll try I finished the song and let, you know, no, let's go and it's been going for like the project has been, been going for like half a year now and the video is almost done He's making this alone, though, in California, and I'm here in Sweden. Uh, we're trying to keep it low budget because, you know, I mean, it would Obviously, be really expensive yeah. if, I, if I flew out there, and I'm not going to be in the video anyway. He has uh, right. choreographers, and he's 
shooting at different locations. The song is over seven minutes, so there's a lot to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I've seen most of the scenes, and there's only like forest scene missing, I think. I think he's, he filmed that this past weekend, so you know I'm just I'm this close to releasing it. <laughs> nice, but I'm, nice. I'm letting him I'm letting him like edit it and stuff. I'll just give him like what I think. But this inspired me to start filming on my own. So me and my dad, my dad is a part-time photographer and he has his drones that he films with. Uh-huh. So in the past one and a half month, we have been uh, filming as well. So I have two of my own music videos that I'm editing myself. But they're not going to come until like after Fireflies. So oh, okay. I'm hoping Fireflies end of June with music video. And then this week I'm releasing other songs, like single songs without videos. How, uh, when you say this week? Yeah, I mean, if I get to com- to finish the mix of two songs that are pretty much finished, I will re- release them now, like we before Fireflies video. Okay, so this uh, the release of these songs might come before actually releasing the podcast, which is totally yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, if I'm done tonight or tomorrow, like the songs will come very soon. <laughs> I just okay, need to actually awesome. sit down and mix them. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, um... I'm a, so yeah, I'm about to come out of this like hiatus and just you know release yeah. a lot. That's fun. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, Chris, I'm gonna have to end it here. Sorry yeah. to run to school. So short. Yeah, I know. I got I got yeah. school and work that I need to do. I got to drop off some things. Um, yeah, so stay people safe. now know what what's going. Uh, like a, a little hint on my uh, personal schedule of what's going on before I release this podcast. But anyway, uh, Chris, it was so nice to have you on this. Yeah, uh, I will. We'll talk again some at some point. I'm sure that we can get the guys to have like a you know more than just us two. We can get three or four people on the on the call, and then we can just have a little chat about more music production and whatnot. So yeah, um, thank you so much for being open and uh, always talking about uh, what where you are, your progress, and uh, letting fans know what's what's going on with you, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's important to stay like not away for too long yeah yeah of course of course all right man well i'll talk to you later all right yeah i'll send you this audio file as well if you want the intro yeah i i, I all right uh, sorry <laughs> i'm just thinking about other things but yeah send it to me yeah sure cool all yeah. right bye Peace, bye man Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast, guys. It really means a lot. Uh, If you enjoyed this, please share this with anybody who you think would find this interesting. Uh, If you want anybody else to be on this podcast, let me know in the comments or send me an email, however you can get in touch with me, and I will see if I can get in touch with that person as well. Anyway, thank you for listening. Take care, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.